Welcome to this section dedicated to microbial fuel cells. This is a pretty new type of fuel cells. It's really interesting because it allows at the same time to produce electricity and to stabilize bio waste or any biologic product. In the tail, organic substrate are usually treated by microbial fuel cells uh, thanks to the biocatalytic activity of microorganisms. So we have a double effect. In the one side, we have a treatment of biodegradable products and the stabilization. And at the other side, of course, we have a direct generation of electricity, like all kinds of fuel cells. But how exactly a microbial fuel cell works? Uh, it's similar to the other uh, fuel cells. So we have three layers. We have an, an, an anombic chamber and uh, an uh, anode and a cathode. Uh, they are placed into different chamber and there is a membrane that separates uh, separates that is a proton exchange membrane so materials are similar for the uh, membranes of polymer electrolyte fuel cell of course there is a, a circuit external that goes um, into a load to produce electricity for user uh, what is a peculiarity is that in uh, the uh, anonymic anodic chamber uh, what it is present it is soil or sediments on any organic matter that can uh, be uh, what is could be considered the fuel of the fuel cell so we can have sediment wastewater sewage sludge activated sludge usually is waste material that needs to be stabilized so that we can have double effect of energy production and stabilization of a waste um, inside the uh, anaerobic chamber we always uh, also place electrochemical active bacteria. This kind of bacteria, uh, when placed in a anaerobic uh, atmosphere, they become exoelectrogens. It means that they uh, complete their um, biologic um, process externally, uh, supplying electrons to the um, uh, anode, uh, that uh, so and to um, activate uh, the um, uh, electrochemical uh, um, process outside. Uh, the, the, the bacteria themselves. So we can supply electrons to the circuit and on the other side we need to complete the process and we usually supply an oxidant, mainly oxygen or usually what is air, that's why it's an aerobic chamber. We can also supply different kind of uh, acceptors like uh, peroxide, permanganate, but of course uh, this um, materials need to be substituted while of course with oxygen it's much easier because we can just blow air to the chamber to renew the presence of the oxidant. Uh, what is the product? Uh, on the cathode is uh, water and we also have a carbon dioxide of course as a process of the um, um, uh, degradation of of the organic uh, matter, and it's also the product of bacterial respiration. Uh, this um, process usually uh, happens in a pretty mild uh, operating condition. That's uh, for sure a big advantage because it allows a very simple uh, uh, thermal treatment. So we usually have a temperature that is around 20, 40 Celsius degree and uh, um, uh, pH uh, cl uh, close to seven or in the, in the range of seven. What kind of reaction really occurs? So that's, uh, it depends on the waste on the organic substrate. For example, we can consider glucose, that is the um, main uh, component that may be treated by this microorganism. And this reaction, of course, is uh, 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 decomposition via uh, water to produce uh, electrons to feed the electrical uh, circuit and the ions, the protons that are in the, um, in the chamber and flow to the through the membrane to the cathode or acetic acid is another uh, possible um, uh, fuel that has a similar reaction producing uh, uh, again uh, electrons to the circuit and uh, ions to the um, to go to call, uh, to reach the cathode uh, regarding the oxygen reduction we have a uh, uh, standard reaction typical of oxygen so we have um, electrons uh, uh, and, uh, I and protons that react with oxygen to produce water that is the main product of the cathode. 
regarding the performances, uh, we usually have a very low performances com compared to other kind of fuel cells. So we have power range density in the order of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kilowatt for uh, cubic meters and uh, that are pretty far from other kind of fuel cells. But here again, it's important to underline that this kind of technology has a double effect. So we don't uh, need to only produce electricity, but we need to stabilize and usually uh, the organic matters. And this, uh, usually this process is an energy intensive and energy um, requesting. So we have an, uh, in this case, an active process compared to a passive process that is the one that usually is used for this. Um, uh, function. What kind of bacteria we use? Um, the interesting aspect is uh, bacteria are microorganisms that are um, constituted by different enzyme pathways. That's uh, uh, it's pretty interesting because um, doesn't uh, necessarily uh, connect uh, one specific bacteria to uh, the organic waste, but uh, it's a sort of um, uh, variety that can be uh, all treated by uh, uh, bacteria, different kind of substrates can be used and treated as a fuel. At the same time, bacteria are usually present in uh, communities and this is ability to be selective, uh, selective about adapt to um, microbial fuel cell environment and also to regenerate. It means that um, a community can um, uh, continue and we don't need to replace um, bacteria with new ones, but uh, we have a continuous process. Finally, uh, bacteria usually need a, a time for acclimatization, and this usually it becomes a sort of stabilization time before the uh, fuel cells really start activating and in operation. Going a little bit more deep on the process that uh, um, produces electrons, uh, we can usually divide into time to electron transfer. The direct one, uh, we can have a direct physical contact with the membrane associated to cytochromes. It means that uh, bacteria are physically in contact with the anode, so the electrons uh, reach the anode through a, a physical contact. Or sometimes uh, these communities build what a sort of a philia, microbial nanowires that allows, uh, it's a sort of connection, physical connection between the anode and the community of uh, of bacteria. Another solution is to have a, a mediated electron transfer. In this case, uh, redox mediators are organic molecular mo molecules with low molecular weight that are um, able to activate a redox process that transfer uh, with uh, their um, activity the electrons from the bacteria directly to the anode. anode. Um, and the uh, uh, main properties of these mediators are they need to have, of course, fast kinetics, uh, easy cells penetration, but also uh, on not be absorbed to ions or bacteria surface. It means that they have to keep an intermediate uh, position between the anode and the bacteria. And of course, they have to be chemical stable. Thank you.